Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this lecture. Uh, this is uh, optics lecture four, and uh, we are dealing with uh, mirrors. <clears throat> we had seen in the previous class the types of spherical mirrors, concave mirror, convex mirror. We had also seen uh, the mirror formula. Tell me what is the mirror formula? Who is going to tell me? What is the mirror formula? Are you forgotten it so quickly? Tell me. What, sir? What, sir? Are you mirror formula? We studied yesterday now. What was that mirror formula? F is equals to R by 2. That was the mirror formula. F is equal to R by 2. That is not the mirror formula, bhai. That is the relation. That is the relation between focal length and radius of curvature. What is the mirror formula? F is equal to 1 by U plus 1 by V. 1 by F is equal to 1 by V plus 1 by u. Do we all remember this? Yes, sir. You can also write it as 2 by r. Yes or no? Yes, sir. We had also seen different, different variation of the same formula. You must remember the different, different variation. We had also seen what is magnification. Magnification. Who is going to tell me what is magnification? Minus into minus v by u. Minus V by U. What is the definition of magnification? It is the height of the object. Nine. Height of the image, HI divided by height of the object, HO. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. For real image, the magnification will always be what? For real image, the value of M magnification would be how much? Positive, negative, zero, what? Hmm? Negative. Problem, negative, problem. Sir. What, sir? Negative, sir. Negative, sir. Will it be erect or will it be inverted? It is taking so much time to give answers to these simple questions. Minus H2 by H1, sir. It is, the formula is not minus H2 by H1. It is H2 by H1, not minus H2 by H1. For real images, will it be positive or negative? You have told me that it will be negative. Will it be erect image or will it be what? Inverted image. Is the real image erect or is the real image inverted? Inverted, sir. Inverted, sir. So much of time you are taking, sir. That means you are seeing it from the notes and then you are telling me that is a very, oops, that is a very bad practice. Not expected that you don't remember this. <clears throat> what about the virtual image? What about the virtual image? The magnification of a virtual image would be? Positive, sir. Will it be erect image or will it be inverted image? Erect it would be a erect image. Do we understand this, everyone? Where is my cursor? Cursor has disappeared all of a sudden. It is here, working here. Some problem with this uh, gentleman. Okay. 
Okay. I hope uh, we remember this. Uh, I don't think we had done questions based on this. So I will try to get some questions online. So let us see if I can get these questions. I had a couple of questions here. Let's see if I can get them. Okay, I had also talked about uh, um, focal length of a concave mirror and the focal length of a convex mirror. I have talked about the sign convention. What about focal length of a concave mirror? Will it be positive or will it be negative? Focal length of a concave mirror, will it be positive or will it be negative? Positive, sir. For a concave mirror, focal length is positive. Are you sure about it? Yes, sir. That is wrong. For a focal length of a concave mirror, it is always negative. Focal length of a convex mirror is positive. Please note it down if you have any doubt. Okay. To start off things, I will start with this question and the question comes right away. An object is 30 centimeters away from a concave mirror of focal length 15 centimeter. The question only asks whether the image is erect, it is virtual, it is diminished, it is of the same size. Now, apart from all these things, if I make this question, I'll ask you, where will the image be formed? What is the magnification of the image? So we have to find out the value of V, which is the distance of the image from the mirror, from the pole of the mirror. And you have to then calculate, you have to then calculate uh, the magnification of that image. So I'll give you one minute to solve this problem. Once you solve this problem, then I'll tell you how this could have been done in a very, very simple way. But first, you'll have to solve this problem and let me know what is the answer. So what are you supposed to tell me in this question? D for doctor. D for doctor is the answer. How did you get the answer? Good, that is the correct answer. How did you get the how do you get the answer? Hmm? How did you get it? Tell me how did you get it? Yes. I can't hear you. If you are telling me, if you are if you are talking, tell me. Article. Is the mic mic working or not? Cut or cut or I was okay. So, I am I audible, sir? Yes, sir, you are audible. The error. Okay. You have to tell me what is the value of V, which is the distance of the image, and you have to tell me the magnification. Now, how do you solve this?
No one knows how to solve it? Then have a look of how do you solve it. First of all, we write what all things are given in the question. The object distance, which is u, is given as 30 centimeters. Now, according to sign convention, the value of u would be minus 30. Yes or no? If the mic is not working, you can raise your hand. The value of u will be minus 30. I told you that uh, every value that we use in a formula must be applied with proper sign convention. The value of u is always negative. Yes or no? The focal length is minus 15. Why it is minus 15? Because it is a concave lens. Now I applied the formula 1 by v plus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f. And I put the values here. 1 by v plus 1 divided by minus 30 is equal to 1 divided by minus 15. So 1 by v will be equal to 1 by 30 minus 1 by 15. Do we understand how we can solve this? We can solve it by taking the LCM and all that. If I solve this, I will get the value of V as minus 30. Do we understand this? Can I raise hand that we understand this? Everyone? Okay. The value of V as we have is minus 30. So that is our first answer. The distance of the image from the pole of the mirror is 30 centimeters. Now, if I had to draw a, a rough diagram, the diagram would look like this. This is my concave mirror. We all can understand this concave mirror. This is the principal axis. This is where the object is placed. This is my object. My image is also coming at the same place. My image is also coming at the same place. So the black thing represents the object and the red thing represents the image. If someone asks me what is the value of magnification, the value of magnification will be minus of V by U. V is minus 30. U is also minus 30. If I solve this, the magnification will be coming as minus 1, minus indicating that, minus indicating what? Minus indicating what? Minus indicating that the image is real. We understand this, yes or no? Minus indicating that the image is real. Now, if the image is real, it cannot be erect. It has to be inverted. That means I have drawn it wrongly, so I will correct myself. That means if the object is here like this, image is formed at the same place, but it would be inverted like this. Do we understand this? Magnification is 1, whether it is plus 1 or minus 1. Plus tells us it is a virtual image. Minus tells us it's the real image one. That means height of the image is equal to height of the object. Both are of the same size. So height of the image, if I call this as the height of the image, HI. And if I call this as the height of the object, HO, both the heights are same because HI divided by HO is coming as one. It is coming as minus 1 because it is inverted. That means both the height are same and we will have image of the same size as the object. Do we understand this? Can I have some reason that we understand this? Image is of the same height as the object. Now, this is how this question has to be solved. But as I told you, it could have been done in a fairly simple way. And what is that way? 
that is what we are going to study in today's class what do we understand here if i look closely at the value of u u is minus 30 u is minus 30 and my focal length is minus 15. When, I, when my focal length is minus 15, minus only indicates the sign convention, nothing else. My focal length is 15. My focal length of the concave mirror is 15. Focal length of the concave mirror is 15. From here, you can find out the radius of curvature of this concave mirror. The radius of curvature of this concave mirror will be two times of this focal length, two times of this focal length. So radius of curvature of this, radius of curvature of this mirror would be minus 30. Do we understand this? Radius of curvature of this mirror is minus 30 because the focal length is minus 15. That means if you look at this radius of curvature and you look at the value of u, u and the radius of curvature are same. u and the radius of curvature are same. u and the radius of curvature are same. That means this object, this object, this object is placed where? This object is placed where? If I just mark it, this is the focus f. The value of focal length is minus 15, minus only indicating the sign. Where is this object placed? The value of u is minus 30, minus only indicates the sign. The radius of curvature is also minus 30, minus only indicates the sign. Where is this object placed? This object is placed at the center of curvature C. Do we understand? This object is placed at the center of curvature. Do we understand? Yes or no? No or yes? Do we understand this? The focal length of this mirror is 15. The radius of curvature is 30. Object is placed at a distance of 30 centimeters. That means the object is placed at the center of curvature. Can I have some reason that we understand this? Everyone. That means in case of a concave mirror, that means in case of a concave mirror, when the object is placed, when the object is placed, O standing for object, when the object is placed at the center of curvature, when the object is placed at the center of curvature, image is also formed at the center of curvature. Do we understand this? And the magnification is minus one. The image is real and the image is inverted. And it is of the same size. Do we all understand these facts about when the object is placed at the center of curvature, what happens? When the object is placed at the center of curvature of a concave mirror, object is placed at the center of curvature of a concave mirror, image is formed at the center of curvature, magnification is minus one, image is real and inverted, and it is of the same size. I'll give you one minute to note it. If you have any doubts, please raise them and ask.
Have you noted it down? Okay. Then we will move further ahead and we will try to understand. And this is the most important uh, fact about uh, this uh, chapter is the ray diagram. Where is the object placed and where you can expect the image to be formed. Now, looking at the concave mirror, we have a focus. We have a center of curvature. These are the two very important points. Now, looking at these two important points and applying some common sense, we can find out by the way of ray diagrams where will the image is formed if an object is placed at different, different positions. So, I hope you can see this. Now, this is my concave mirror. I hope you can all see this. Now, I can have five different positions of the object which will cover every possible orientation. This is my focal and this is my center of curvature. Now, there are five different, uh, five or six different positions where we can place the object. Number one position is at infinity. The object is placed at a very, very large distance. Infinity means it is very far. You are probably seeing the image of moon or you are probably seeing the image of sun in a concave mirror. Sun or moon are very, very far away from us. We can take them to be at infinite distance. Do we understand this? Then the second position, remember this infinity is very, very large. So infinity is somewhere here, very, very far. The second position that we can see is beyond beyond the center of curvature. Here I can say U, which is the object distance, is approximately equal to infinite. It's very far. Now, when I say beyond C, the value of U lies between infinity and the radius of curvature. So the object is placed more than a distance of 2R. For example, if the focal length is 15 centimeter, if the focal length is 15 centimeter, the radius of curvature becomes 30 centimeter. So if the object is placed after 30 centimeter, 40, 45, 50, 55, 100, it will fall in the second category. The second category being beyond C or beyond center of curvature. Do we understand this? The third category would be the object is placed at C. At C means it is placed at the center of curvature. That means the value of U would be equal to R. This is the case that we have already seen. Yes or no? We have seen case number three. Yes or no in the problem? Did I have reason that we have already seen this case? Now, what could be the fourth case? What could be the fourth case? Let me draw case number two and case number three. Case number two is, this is object is placed beyond C. Object is placed at infinity. This is my case number one. Case number three is where I have the object placed at the center of curvature. I come to case number four and case number four object is placed between, between where and where? Between C and F, between the center of curvature and the focus. That means R would be less than U and U would be greater than F. Oops, I have draw. I have written it wrongly. I probably uh, reverse the reverse the sign. U is greater than infinity. Hmm. That is the correct sign. I have just written the sign wrongly. So U is greater than F but u is less than r that means case number four 
will lie somewhere here in between in between c and f what about case number 5 when i say case number 5 the object will be placed at the focus that implies the value of u would be equal to f case number 5 drawn by red would be here the object would be placed at the focus of the mirror case number 6 case number 6 it will be placed between if i say this is the pole of the mirror p it will be placed between p and f this implies the value of u would be less than f which is the focal length that means it would be placed somewhere here this is position number 6 do we understand what i am writing here these are the six different position starting from infinity starting from very far we come close 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 we come to beyond c then we come more close we come to c then we come between c and f then we come to f and then we go beyond f these are the six position where we have to understand where is the image going to be formed if we understand all these six cases it will cover every position of the object and if we understand it we will be able to say just looking at where the object is placed what type of image it will be formed and that will solve almost 98 99% of the questions that can be asked in this topic of reflection by concave similarly we will do it for convex mirror also concave and convex mirror this is how you are going to solve it case by case do we understand this can i have some reason that we understand this these are the six cases i hope you have drawn it i'll give you a minute to draw it
Have you noted down these uh, six positions? Shall we move ahead? Okay, now the first of these positions is where object is placed at infinity. I hope all of you can see this. Now, looking at the diagram, rays which are coming parallel, parallel, they are coming from an object which is very, very far away. If it is very, very far away, it is infinity. I will enhance the diagram for you to see. When the object is placed at infinity, you can see the image. It is formed is real, inverted, and diminished. When I mean diminished, it means it is very, very small. Very, very small, which is given by the fact that the magnification is very, very small compared to minus one. Do we understand this? When the object is placed at infinity, the image formed by the concave mirror is always real. It is inverted and it is very small in size. Magnification is minus one. And this image is formed. This image is formed at the focus of the mirror. This image will be formed, as you can see, it is formed at the focus of the mirror. I am going to enlarge the view so that you can see it on the big screen. Now, I hope you can see this. What are the facts that you must remember about this, this particular case? This particular case means when the object is at a distance very, very far away, the sun or the moon, the moon is very big in size, but when you see the image, the image is very small, we call it diminished. The image is real, that means you see the inverted moon. You see the inverted moon, the image is inverted, image is real, and image will always be formed at the focus. The image will be formed at the focus of the concave mirror. Do we understand this? When the object is at infinity, image is formed at the focus. Image is real. Image is inverted. And it is very, very small in size. Do we all understand this? Can you draw this diagram? I'll give you a minute to draw this diagram and write, write what is given in the notes, which I have already highlighted. This is what you should write. The diagram is already in your sheet. Try to draw it. This will also give you practice to draw the ray diagram because they can give you a ray diagram and they can ask you which is the correct answer. I'll give you a minute to note it down.
I hope you have noted down the first case. The first case is the case where object is placed at infinity. Now we'll move on to the second case. And the second case is what I called as beyond C, after C, or you can call it the object is placed between infinity and center of curvature. So it is after center of curvature, but it is not very far away. As you can see in the diagram, this is the object which is placed and this is the center of curvature. I will, I will just enhance the view of this diagram so that we can see it on the big screen, the diagram. The diagram is important because everything that we are discussing is coming in the diagram. As you can see, the object is placed after center of curvature C. We have drawn the ray diagram. I've told you the way to draw the ray diagram. You can see that the image is formed between C and F. You can see the image is here. It is formed between C and F. That is what you must understand, that the image is formed between C and F. Image is formed between C and F. You can see that the image is inverted. Rays are actually meeting. It is real. It is inverted. You can see object is taller, but the image is shorter. That means it is of smaller size, but not very small. If the object is this much, the image is this much. So it is not very small. In case of infinity, the image was very, very small compared to the object. But in case of beyond C, it is small, but not so small. Magnification is less than minus one. Do we understand this diagram, everyone? What you have to remember is the diagram and the information that you must remember and the information is coming when the object is placed between infinity and C, the image is real, image is inverted, slightly smaller, magnification is less than one, minus one. The image is formed between center of curvature and F. Can I have raised hands from everyone that you understand this? I'll give you a minute to draw this diagram. I hope you have noted down case number two, which is object placed after center of curvature. Now comes the third case where the object is placed exactly at the center of curvature. We have seen, you can see the object 
it is placed exactly at the center of curvature object is uh, erect we find that the image is also at the same point which is the center of curvature image is real image is inverted and the magnification is minus one minus indicating it is real image one indicating that the height of the object and the height of the image are same i will just enlarge the view of your diagram so that you can see it on the big screen and here it comes on the big screen the diagram that i'm talking about the object is placed at the center of curvature of height edge the image is formed at the center of curvature but it is inverted because it is real magnification is as you can see minus one image is formed at the same place these are the things that you must remember about this when the object is placed at the center of curvature the image is formed at the center of curvature and the image is real and the image is inverted there is one particular thing that we are seeing there is one particular thing that we are seeing in the three cases that we have done so far as soon as you are coming from very large distance at very large distance the image is very small please note it down at very large distance the, the image is very small but as soon as i come towards the mirror the image is getting bigger and bigger the image is getting bigger and bigger when the object is placed at the center of curvature image becomes the same size as that of the object when it is far away it is very small as the object comes nearer it becomes bigger 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 you could see from the back mirror of your car when the car is far away it looks smaller but when the car is closer to your car in the back view mirror you will see image getting bigger do we understand this then i'll give you a minute to note everything down from this particular case Have you drawn it? Have you uh, written what was supposed to be written? Everyone? Okay. Then comes the next case where the object is placed between C and F. As you can see, this is your center of curvature. This is your focus. The object is placed at this point between center of curvature and the focus the image that you can see is real it is inverted and it is enlarged now the image has become more big than the object and the image is formed beyond c so the image is coming after c the magnification is greater than minus one this again this again tells us the same thing that as the object comes closer and closer the image becomes larger and larger do we understand this okay this is the enlarged view of the ray diagram i hope you can see the ray diagram on the bigger screen the object is placed between c and f the image is formed beyond c the image is enlarged the image is real and the image is inverted i'll give you a minute to note the facts of this case down 
what happens when the object is between C and F? I'll give you a minute. I hope you have noted it down. That takes us to the next case. In the previous case, the object was between C and F. In this case, case number five, the object is placed at F. As you can see, the object is placed at the focus. The image formed is real. Real image is always inverted at very large distance, which you can call it at infinity. When you place the object at the focal point, at the focus, the image is formed at infinity and magnification is very very large you will see a very large image so magnification is very large compared to one this is the diagram that shows us object is placed at the focus the image is formed at infinity and the image is real the image is inverted and it is very very large in size everyone understands this can i have raised hands that you understand this Please note this down. I will give you a minute. I hope you have written down the previous case. Let us move on to the last case. And in the last case, as you can see, the object is placed here. The focus is here. So the object is placed between the focus and the pole of the mirror. This is a very, very peculiar case because only in this case you find that the image is virtual, it is erect. Image is virtual and it is erect. This is the only one case in which the concave mirror forms a virtual image. 
the image is virtual the image is erect and the image is enlarged the value of magnification is greater than plus 1 again the same fact again the same fact again the same fact again the same fact that as you go closer and closer to the mirror the image becomes larger and larger and when the object is placed between f and p the image is virtual and the image is enlarged the concave mirror that we use in the car is having a very large focal length and therefore you always see the image as virtual and you always see the image as enlarged do we understand this this is the diagram that i will show in bigger, the object is placed between F and P. The image is formed on the virtual side. It is virtual, it is erect, and it is enlarged. I will give you a minute to note everything else down. Well, I hope you have noted down the case. Now, what we are going to do is just uh, summarize everything that we have seen for a concave mirror. And this is very important for a concave mirror. What can a concave mirror do? What can a concave mirror do? Now, please remember this. The concave mirror for a real object for a real object, the concave mirror can form real image. The concave mirror can also form virtual image. Do we understand this? For a real object, a concave mirror can form real image as well as virtual image. This real image can have magnification less than minus one. It can have magnification equal to minus one. It can have magnification greater than minus one. That means it can form all types of real images, whether they are small, whether they are of the same size, or whether they are enlarged. Do we understand this? A concave mirror for a real object can form real image, which can be very small, which can be of the same size, which can be enlarged. But for a virtual object, for, but for a virtual image, this virtual image only happens in one case, and that case is case number six. That case is case number six. For a virtual image, whenever it is formed by a concave mirror, the magnification is always greater than plus one. That means the magnification, that means this magnification is more than one. The image is always enlarged. So 
an enlarged virtual image is always formed by a concave mirror. Now, we have not seen the case when the object is virtual, but this is for your information because the question can come. For a virtual object, for a virtual object, for a virtual object, for a virtual object, it can only form real image. For a virtual object, it can only form real image. It cannot form a virtual image. That is what you need to remember. A concave mirror, concave mirror cannot make virtual image of a virtual object. Can you remember all these things that I have told you? What can and what cannot a concave mirror do? A concave mirror for a real object can make real image as well as virtual. For a virtual image, it can only make real image it cannot make virtual image of a virtual object. Can I have raised hands from everyone? I'll give you a minute to note this down. Now we come to this stage, and I have seen this question coming in the exam many times. Remember, this is a concave mirror, this is a plane mirror, and this is, no, sorry, this is a convex mirror. The first one is a convex mirror. The second one is a plane mirror, and the third one is a concave mirror. <clears throat> a convex mirror for a real object, it will always form a virtual image, and that image will be smaller in size. A plane mirror for a real object will always form its virtual image and that image will be same in size. That means the magnification will be plus one. A concave mirror, if it forms a virtual image, a concave mirror, if it forms a virtual image of a real object, the image will always be enlarged. Do we understand this? This is how you can Differentiate between a concave mirror, concave, convex mirror, and a concave mirror. With real objects, the, if the image is virtual and diminished, it is convex. If the image is always of the same size, it is a plane mirror. If the image is enlarged, virtual image is enlarged, it is a concave mirror. Please note it down, my dear friends. Then let's move ahead. The next heading is power of a mirror. We'll have a heading power of a lens as well. Power of a mirror. The power of a mirror is normally in diopters. Diopter is a SI unit. Power of a mirror is minus one by F. It's the inverse of focal length with a negative sign. The focal length must be in meters to have the power in diopter, if it is in centimeter, the formula becomes minus 100 by F focal length in centimeters. Remember, the power of a concave mirror. Concave mirror is having negative focal length. 
power is the negative of focal length so power for a concave mirror is positive do we understand this power of a concave mirror is positive do we understand this can i have some raise hand that we understand this power of a concave mirror is positive power of a concave convex mirror is negative power of a convex mirror is negative remember whenever remember whenever remember whenever the power is positive that mirror or that lens becomes converging lens it converges rays of light it becomes a converging lens positive power means converging converging negative powers means diverging do we understand this so a concave mirror becomes a converging mirror power is positive focal length is negative convex mirror becomes a diverging mirror power is negative focal length is positive do we understand this raise of hands and then i'll give you a minute to win it that takes us to the last topic of this uh, mirror formula this is known as the newton's mirror formula or simply newton's formula now in the mirror formula 1 by v plus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f there u v and f u v and f we are measured from the pole of the mirror yes or no u v and f we are measured from the pole of the mirror now instead of measuring them from the pole of the mirror if they are measured from the focus of the mirror and that is being underlined instead of distances being measured from the focus of the mirror if i apply it if i apply it in the mirror formula the mirror formula with sign convention will look like this that is not what you have to remember that is not what you have to remember what you got to remember is the result that i get x1 into x2 is x square this formula is known as the newton's formula what is x1 here x1 here is the object distance and x2 here is the image distance measured from the focus of the mirror x1 is the object distance from the focus of the mirror x2 is the image distance from the focus of the mirror if i use distances from the focus of the mirror rather than from the pole of the mirror the formula becomes newton's formula and it becomes x1 into x2 is equal to f square do we understand this please note down this newton's formula i'll give you a minute to note down this newton's formula at the same time at the same time what i'm going to do is i am going to show you this formula in terms of the diagram so that you understand how does this formula look in terms of the diagram and i have less space here where is my space gone to move this i have to move this okay this is how it looks like in the diagram my dear friends and i hope it comes here on the screen i hope you can see this i hope you can see this x1 oops wrong color wrong thing x1 x1 is the distance of the object from the focus in the original formula it was u do we understand this raise hand will give me more confident that you understand this x2 is the distance of the image from the focus we see this image from the focus in the original formula it was v so u has been replaced by x1 v has been replaced by x2 and when you do that the formula looks very simple and the formula looks x1 into x2 is equal to f square this is known as newton's formula do we understand this i will give you a minute 
to note it down. The diagram is already there in your sheet. And the Newton's formula is right now on your screens. A minute to win it. And we will then wrap up the class. Then we come to the uses of concave mirror and convex mirror. Convex mirror always give a smaller diminished image. It gives us the field of view. It can help us in seeing a large portion because the image is smaller and therefore it is used as rear view camera in vehicles. Probably I told you by slip of the tongue as concave mirror. They are not concave mirror, they are convex mirror because a big car looks very small a big car looks very small the image is virtual so instead of the car which is very big you also see the road you also see the nearby vehicles and that is why the convex mirror is used as a rear view mirror in vehicles i mistakenly place of the tongue i told you that as a concave mirror that is not a concave mirror slip of the tongue convex mirror do we understand this now where do we use concave mirror if you want to find <laughs> if you want to enlarge something Make it very big. Magnifying glass is what you use. It gives an enlarged, erect, and virtual image. So they are used by dentists. I don't hope that you are trying to become a dentist, maybe much more than that. But a you know, magnifying mirror can be a convex mirror, concave mirror. Uh, you can see uh, sometimes when you go to a hotel, there is a small mirror put over there where you see your face. Your face looks very good. You can use it for brushing. You can use it for shaving. Enlarge view. We have concave mirrors. These are the uses of concave mirror and convex mirror. When you need a large field of view, rear view, uh, rear view mirror of your vehicles, they are convex mirrors. Dentist, if we see and large view of your inside of your mouth, they use concave mirror. So these are the uses of concave mirror and convex mirror. I hope you will note it down and you will remember them. Yes or no? Well, then that brings us to the end of uh, today's class. In today's class, we have done concave mirror and convex mirror. We have seen the mirror formula 1 by V plus 1 by U is 1 by F. Distances there are measured from the pole P of the mirror. If the distances are measured instead of from the pole P. If they are measured from the focus F, the formula becomes Newton's formula X1 into X2 is equal to F square. We have also seen what type of images concave mirror forms, what type of mirror convex mirror forms and what are their uses. A concave mirror can form real and virtual image of a real object. But for a virtual object, it can only form real image. A concave mirror cannot form virtual image of a virtual object. Similarly, a convex mirror cannot form real image of a real object. The power of a mirror is minus one by F power of a concave mirror is positive it is converging mirror power of a convex mirror is negative it is a diverging mirror that's it from my end for today's class i hope you have enjoyed it when you come to the next class we will be beginning with refraction but that means that you will have to cover the questions whatever we have done have a look at it i have not seen many questions coming from mirrors Whatever question have come from mirrors are based on what type of image, which type of mirror can form and what is the magnification. Most of the questions. So one question I ex expect will be coming from this part. One or two questions will be coming from the refraction part because refraction part is a lot bigger than this. And probably one, one question from that uh, telescope and microscope I'm expecting. That is how we will uh, go about it. And uh, that's a wrap from mine for today. Take care and uh, have a Nice day. Bye-bye.